All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So let's go, guys. Oh, man. Gloomy day here in D.C., man. It is shadow cast. But um, this brother right here you see on the screen, man, this Otep brother from um, Atlanta. We're going to get to him in a second, man. It's just like, oh, my God. The, the murder is up nationwide. And I got and I was going to do some of this on this video today, but I got to I got to add it. I got to do my, my own video on this. This murder nationwide and Biden getting these endorsements from all these mayors, these murderous, treacherous cities. Um, I'm going to do a video on that tomorrow, most likely. But trust me, we get into this hotel, brother, in a minute, man. We're going we gonna, to we gonna break down this whole situation in Atlanta. They're killing hoteps now. The homies, the homies is killing hoteps now. Homies versus hoteps. Ah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But first, let's go to Baltimore. Actually, friends and co-workers of Mr. Parks made a memorial in his honor. Someone even tied one of his work shirts to the bus stop bench. According to police charging documents, Parks suffered from multiple gunshot wounds from a semi-automatic handgun. The male suspect in this case, police say, even shot Mr. Parks as he lay on the ground. 24-year-old Cameron Silcott and 27-year-old Michelle Green both face first-degree murder charges and handgun violations. I would like to remember him as a family man. Um, he was very caring and very protective over his family um, and friends. 51-year-old MTA bus driver Marcus Parks was known as a peacemaker, someone with a gift for resolving conflicts. Ironically, he was shot. He was known as a peacemaker. <laughs> God, dog. No. God, dog. No. If, if we lost a peacemaker, Baltimore lost a peacemaker. Not a violence interrupter, but an actual dude that just knew how to resolve conflicts. Someone who was in the public sphere, a, 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 an essential worker, a bus driver. And you know how the buses be in cities like Baltimore, D.C., Philly. It's just it's rough, man. It's rough, you know, on the bus, public transportation. It can get rough. You know, you used to it if you just, you know, every day. But, I mean, things can get rough. Things can it can happen. So sad we lost a, a peacemaker, man. Maker. Someone with a gift for resolving conflicts. Ironically, he was shot to death following an argument with someone who wanted to board his bus that was no longer in service. Police say the suspect took Parks' bag and ran. Parks chased after him and was gunned down. Our hearts and prayers are not only with Mr. Parks' family, but... His family, his friends, his co-workers, as well as the residents who got to know him on his route. Police took 24-year-old Cameron Kane Silcott and 27-year-old Nichelle Nicole Green into custody in connection with Park's murder. Broke ass Dave East. <laughs> it looks like a, a dollar store Dave East, man. God dog. Uh... Cameron, Kane, Silcott, Michelle just threw their lives away in their mid-twenties. Grabbed this man, wanted to get on the bus that was no longer in service. So the bus wasn't going nowhere. But of course, someone in authority told them something. And as many, many of us have to be, we have to be rebellious against anybody. I say this all the time. It's not just cops that black folks have problems with all the time. If you're at the pool, it's the lifeguard. If you're at the library, it's the librarian. If you're in a department store, it's the manager, the clerk, one of the workers. We got to give police a break, man. It's not just police. And the, and the fact that it's not just police is telling us something that we don't want to talk about. 
If, it, if, if everywhere, whoever's in charge or whoever has authority, whoever's the person who has the final say or is there the, the person, the, the top of the, uh, the chain, when you're on the bus, that's the bus driver. And I've done so many stories on this in the past. I've done so many stories of this on the past. Of bus drivers getting beat up. Bashed. Brutally bashed. Killed. I've done so many stories about this. On public transportation. We have to give police a little bit of a break, y'all. Hit one if you agree with me on that. That it's not... That the police officer having pro issues with these Negroes is because they're authority figure. And other authority figures are having the same problem with, with these Negroes. So what's the common denominator here? The Negro. So it's, it, we got we to gotta get these police a break, y'all. The arrest came after a three-hour standoff at Perkins Homes. This is about six blocks from the murder scene. Police credit tips from the community. And it was information from the community that, that helped us uh, figure out where we were going and where we should look. 51-year-old Marcus Parks drove a city bus for the past 20 years. Family members say he played basketball at Lake Clifton Eastern High School. Mayor Jack Young was a personal friend. They'd watch AAU games together. Parks would root for Lake Clifton, Mayor Young, Dunbar. We used to joke all the time about who's going to pay for lunch. And, um, you know, he would always win, of course, because he'd tell me, oh, no, I paid the last time. Just a, a great guy. I just... My man was a personal friend of the mayor. <laughs> a bus driver. A man known just as a great guy, a, a person that could had a gift for solving disputes. Two knuckleheads come on his bus while he's probably at the end of his shift, getting ready to go home. The bus is out of service, because when they're out of service, the sign is on the bus. It says it on the front, out of service, on the little digital screen on the front of the bus. He tells the two knuckleheads, you can't get on. They steal his bag and run with it. He chases them and gets executed. Stand over. I'm talking about shot and then the guy stands over him and finishes him off. The close friend of the mayor. Personal friend of the mayor. And a city that's experiencing great crime. Extreme crime. A close friend of the mayor is gunned down. And if you go to the Baltimore Gun Memorial, God, dog. Listen, Baltimore is is good for 320 murders a year on a regular year. They're past that. They're doing. They they they're, they're destroying those records. And now a personal friend of the mayor is, is a, becomes a victim on some senseless bullshit. And we gotta hear about. And if somebody get killed in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, these niggas in Baltimore are gonna be marching for that guy. If some dope fiend OD in the back of a squad car in Butte, Montana, <laughs> these niggas in Baltimore are gonna be protesting for him. <laughs> Will there be any protest for this brother? No. About who's gonna pay for lunch? And, um, you know, he will always win, of course, because he'd tell me, oh, no, I paid the last time. Just a, a great guy. I just can't believe that this happened to him. And, um, you know, I just ask that everyone just keep us in, in their prayers. Police charging documents indicate Silcott was caught after jumping out of a second-story window at Perkins Homes. Green was arrested inside the premise. The Parks family is still working out funeral arrangements. Reporting live from East Baltimore, David Collins, WBAL TV 11 News. Okay, so here's the murders the year to date. And all these are democratically run cities. Let's go to Baltimore.
Baltimore had 240 last year. They have 247 this year. So, I mean, not that much of it. That's a lot of people. God damn. That's, just think about it. 247 people have been killed in Baltimore this year. Murdered. Let's go see who, <laughs> what they look like. Okay, so that's our brother, Marcus Sparks. And some of these don't have pictures. So we're going to use a game. Let's play the game. What race is Tyreek Harvin? <laughs> Give me a race on Tyreek Harvin. Okay, we got Leroy Green. Give me a race on Vincent McCoy. Look at all these black folk dying. You would think this city was 100% black. Give me a race on Melvin Thompson. Give me a... Let's play a game. Let's just look at all the name, all the ones where there's no picture. Mm-mm. Rashad Wright. Give me a give me a give me a give me a race on Rashad Wright. <laughs> God dog. Look at all these brothers, man. And they been protesting nonstop in Baltimore for George Floyd and Rashad Brooks. They ain't they ain't protest for Rashad Wright, but they protested for Rashad Brooks. Give me a race on William Bellamy. Bill Bellamy, goddamn. Y'all killed Bill Bellamy. Ah, oh, motherfuckers. <laughs> Shit, boy. Ah, right, here go a white guy. Adam McCormack. And on August 3rd. Whew. All these brothers got whacked out in the city of Baltimore. And all this is since George Floyd. And Brianna. You know, another white boy, Sean McDonald. And that these white boys most likely got killed by Negroes too. God dog. This city is like 65% black, but it's not a hundred percent black. God dog. Shanna Lloyd. Ooh. Look at all these black people that have been killed. Shane, Shane, Shania Miller and Cheyenne Miller, they were mother and daughter. They were killed by the um, boyfriend. All these niggas, man. Woo! God, 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 God. But this is the one where we're talking about right here. Our buddy Marcus Parks, 51. God. Mm-mm. Just such such a just such a waste of life, man. And 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 you know, when you're in that public space and, and and you and you the person in charge and there's Negroes around, you better be you better be good at resolving conflicts. He'd have been better off letting them niggas take his bag, but he don't have he shouldn't have to let somebody just run off with his bag. Who knows what he had in that bag that was important to him? You gonna get on a bus that's out of service. I tell you it's out of service. And you just gonna get mad and then snatch my bag and run with it. And I gotta take the L, cause you might, you you might, you might execute me on broad daylight. And then a cop encounters this motherfucker. <laughs> a cop with a gun encounters this motherfucker. Headlines from around the metro. Atlanta police say a man was shot to death 
while unloading his groceries. The 42-year-old man was gunned down on Camilla Street in southwest Atlanta around 11 last night. Police say four men wearing hoodies in a dark color today and allegedly went through the victim's car, but it's not clear if anything was stolen. All four men drove away from the scene in the sedan. The victim's name has not been released. Atlanta police said the man was fatally shot while he unloaded groceries overnight. God, you can't even take, you can't even unload your groceries. The 42-year-old man was gunned down on Camilla Street in Southwest Atlanta around 11 p.m. So you out 11 p.m. unload groceries. That's one thing that we're experiencing a lot of in D.C. right now. Carjackings, things like that. So you got to be very careful out here. Police said the man was shot several times and pronounced dead at the scene. Authorities said four men wearing hoodies. So we got four men wearing hoodies. So they all had on hoodies. And <laughs> you ain't supposed to discriminate against a black man in a hoodie. A black man in a hoodie, you know, is a target of the cops. If you a black man with the hoodie, you the victim. The black man in the hoodie is the victim. <laughs> Literally, if you are a black man who wears a hoodie, you're the target. America's looking to do something wrong to you. <laughs> we got to stand up for our brothers in hoodies. You know Trayvon That's the only reason Trayvon got killed The only reason If it wasn't for that Trayvon would still be alive today If he wouldn't have wore that hoodie So four men wearing hoodies In, dark, in a dark colored sedan Are responsible for the shooting Police said the men allegedly went through the victim's car But they are not sure if anything was stolen We know the victim's name now His name is Muhammad Abdus Salam Brother Hotep out. Garb. Garbed out. Said a Janza, a Janaza prayer will be on Saturday, October 10th. So that was yesterday at the Masjid. Mm. Muslim brother. And I try to tell people, a lot of people think, oh, well, this, this is this is stuff that's going on in a black neighborhood, this gang banging and gangsters killing gangsters, taking out the trash. Good riddance. It's not that way, man. Half of the people that get killed in Blackistan are not in the streets. The ones y'all protest for are in the streets, but the majority of them are not in the streets. This brother, man, the serious look on his face. You know he was down for the cause, too. The same brothers who killed him in them hoodies, he would have tried to... Help them out. Get their life right. Brother, the white man, you gotta, you can't be doing this stuff because you, you need to be twice as good because the white man and all this crap. Sad, man. Sad, man. Yeah, and the next victim of being, the next victim of those poet laureates is definitely most likely not a gangbanger. That's how Black Stan works. You see, I do tons of stories on kids. I don't even do them all. I want y'all to know, when I go to the, when I do, y'all see me doing a story on a bunch of kids that got killed or whatever, or I do a mashup, or maybe I even do a story about one kid that got killed, but I do a lot of them. That ain't all of them. That ain't most of them. That's a very small percentage of these kids that get killed. I can't do them all. I can't keep up with the brothers, the brothers, the working brothers, the, the, the pillars in their community that get killed. 
They out here killing hoteps. Homies is killing hoteps, man. And this wasn't a hit. They saw this guy. They was riding around looking for a lick. They saw this guy unloading his groceries. They went to rob him. Shot him, killed him. Went through his car. And the, from the police, that they ain't even steal nothing. Just killed this brother. Riding around looking for a lick. Just like what happened to the brothers in another story I, I did um, earlier this week. The brother in D.C. Homies just riding around looking for licks. They caught this brother slipping. He was, he was getting out of his car. He just happened to be unloading groceries from his car. Oh, there go one. All right, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. Hey, look, look, look. And then next thing you know, he dead. <sighs> and and then I got to hear about how I'm the problem. <laughs> I'm the problem. White man, the problem. What's what what would help them four brothers in the, them four hoodie hoodie clad brothers in that in that car? What would help them? Somebody in the comment section in the chat, tell me what what would help them? Cause cause the narrative is that they would have been doctors and lawyers and entrepreneurs if it wasn't for white supremacy. Every black criminal would have been a great person if it wasn't for white supremacy. Like Al Sharpton said, if the, the white man would have took his foot off their neck. The white man got his foot on their neck. Once the white man take his foot off their neck, they'd be great people. See a brother loading groceries, man. Unload groceries out of his car, man. That tears me up, man. These stories tear me up, man. These stories tear me up, man. I ain't even gonna lie to you, man. These stories tear me up, bro. Get in the comment section, man. Like, subscribe. I got some good stuff coming down the pike this week. Make sure you donate. If you don't donate, you a op. You a liberal. <laughs> if you ain't donate, if you don't donate, you a liberal. You ain't if you if you ain't dumb, if you don't donate, you a pasty white liberal, man. <laughs> so hit that cash app, hit that PayPal, hit that super chat. Salute to everybody who does. Um, I got some good things coming down the pike for y'all this week, man. I just wanted to give y'all a little something Sunday night, man. <laughs> oh man. Peace, man.